This All call is being recorded. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition of the Guiding Light Ministry. I am your co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with our co-host, Pastor Herbert McCoy, who's, I mean, Pastor Paul McCoy. And uh, we're going to have our first lady, uh, Diane McCoy, come on and introduce our guest speaker. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor McCoy has a heart for you, not only personally, and for following Christ with a service heart. He is a loving husband, a devoted father, and papa. He also has much love for the one he so lovely calls Pastor Mom. He is a proud pastor of the Flint Fellowship Church, where he serves faithfully in teaching, preaching, and ministry. He has a burden for these people where they are through community outreach. He has a long list of other attributes which I will not list at this time. But for me, the greatest is love to God and his wife. With that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce not only my pastor, but my friend, and my husband of 44 years. Let's give a warm amen to Dr. Herbert McCoy. Amen. 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 We are so happy to be online this evening with the Guiding Life Ministries. Uh, I'm I'm hearing an echo here. Is there something I need to do to get rid of the echo? Uh, it's on your side, so that's probably your speakerphone because we don't hear echo. You sounding great over here. You don't you don't hear you the echo. No, sir, you sound wonderful. Okay, okay. All, right. all right. So that's my echo then. Okay, I, I think I'm a little bit better now. I, I did it a different way. Are, are you still with me? Am I still yes, on? Still. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right, all right. I just want to make sure we got it straight. Well, I once again I, I, I wanna uh, uh say glory to God. Uh for all that he has done and, and that he makes uh, tonight possible uh, for us. And, and we want to thank Pastor uh, Mark and, and Pastor Paul for carrying on this ministry, the, the, uh, uh, this on these Friday nights. Uh, I do get to be on sometimes, but I, I know sometimes I get like some of them other folks that say, this is the only time I got to rest. <laughs> I know, I I know that's not a, a a good way to do a lot of things, but that's what happens a lot of times. But I do uh, uh, get on and listen for a time. I may not be from beginning to end, uh, but I do really appreciate this ministry, uh, Pastor Mark and and Pastor uh, Paul. And then uh, we got Pastor Mom online too. Uh, I want to say hello to her and 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 thank God for everyone else. Uh, that is with us this evening. Thank you, uh, Brother Doug Roberts, uh, who rendered uh, that prayer for us, and, and we look forward uh, to hearing a little bit later on from uh, Sister Vivian if she's online. Uh, but tonight what I wanted to do is, is just, I want to just speak, of, I, I want to talk briefly uh, about something I think that's very important right now. Uh, at this very moment, because of, of all that uh, is is transpiring, and uh, not only uh, with the weather, it don't take the weather to to render a storm, and that, that's what uh, Pastor Paul was telling us earlier, and uh, that's what uh, Brother Doug talked about earlier too. There, there are all kinds of of storms that come in our life. And I, 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 I've learned in life that either you are uh, uh, coming out of a storm, uh, on your way into a storm, or else you are in the midst of a storm. But what I want to tell us about this evening, now I'm think, I think it's good news. I, I really do. I like to talk about good news. I want to talk this evening for a little bit about God's hand, about the very hand 
of God. And what I want to do uh, is go over to the uh, 145th number of Psalm. 145th number of Psalms. And you, you know I'm excited. I, I uh, so excited to be on. I, I, I would usually read a scripture for you first and then tell you uh, how we're going to, to talk about it, but I'm, I'm a little too excited this evening. I, let us go to 145th number of Psalms, though, and I want to read it in its entirety, and believe you me, uh, there is brevity in, in the way I'm going to do this, but I think we need to have a whole of this uh, uh, psalm, this book of Psalms, in order to be able to move forward uh, with what we're doing and also to be able uh, to be where we're at and, as we say, have peace. Uh, the 145th number of Psalm reads as follows. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your work to another and shall declare your mighty act. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on the wonderful work, I will meditate. Men shall speak of the power of your awesome act, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall eagerly utter the memory of your abundant goodness and will shout joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all, and his mercies are over uh, all his works. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your godly ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of, the, of your power to make known to the sons of men your mighty act and the glory of your majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The, the eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And as I said, we want to talk this evening for the time given us about God's hand. We began off here looking at this Psalm 145. This, the whole of this Psalm, as you notice as I read it, you didn't hear David ask for anything. See, he's gotten all these other 144 Psalms where he's come up and he's asked God to bless him with this and bless him with that. He's asked God to deliver him from this and deliver him from that. He's asked God to take care of his enemy and to mow him down. He's asked God to help him with where he's at. Oh, he's helped God to help his eyes not look upon some things. He's asked God to protect him. He's asked for 144 books. He has pleaded with God for so many things. He said it back then, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. He says, I shall not want. But the thing of it is, he didn't really get to the place where he didn't want until he got to this 145th number of the psalm. And this 145th and the, the five books that are after it, those other five numbers of psalms, as they go through, they don't, you don't hear him asking for a thing. They are all praises 
unto God. And matter of fact, he gets to the end of the matter, and he says, and let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. This, this, this particular 145th number of songs, it was just so important. He took great care with this song. They, they, they had to sing it. You know, these, these were things that people sang, and, and the way that he put it together, he put it together so that each thing that he said about the goodness of God, he said it in an alphabetical fashion. He put all the alphabets there except one, but it, it, people that were able to sing it, they were able to, to put it to memory. Now, now the Jews had a very high opinion of of this song. As a matter of fact, they said that if it was said three times a day, you would be sure of being a child of the world to come. Mm -hmm. And and, and not only in, in, in that, but it wasn't to just say it anyway, but you had to say it with your mouth. You had to say it with your heart. You had to say it with your tongue. And, 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 and the Lord granted all the requests put upon him of all the preceding songs. He got to this place. He was given rest from his enemies. And, and, and when he turned his prayers into praise for all of these other songs at the end, and matter of fact, they all begin with hallelujah, and they end with hallelujah. This, this song is, is, a, is, is a prayer. It, 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 it takes us to the end of what God really wants us to be, the place that he would have us to know that we belong to the Messiah and that we are of his kingdom, which is everlasting. I, I want to just look at these first, the first 13 verses there. I'm not going to go back and read them. I just want to tell you about them. I want to tell you what, what's there. See, it tells us in that, that, that the first half there, and that, those first 13 verses, it tells us, that God is worthy of our faithfulness. He tells us he's worthy of our faithfulness, first of all, because of his power. God has the power to do whatever he wants to do. That power is the power that tells us when, when, when Jesus got up and he said, I got all power. He got up with all power where? In his hand. He got soul saving power. He he got up with healing power. He got up with soothing power. He got up with all power in his hand. And, and, and then to have all this power in his hand, we find out that we also should be faithfulness because of his kindness. When you got that kind of power, you you don't have to be kind. Just look at some of your politicians. They get a little bit of power, and they can't even be kind with it. But he is a kind God. He has kindness in his hand. Yeah. Not only is he powerful, not only is he kind, but we should also be faithful. He is worthy of our faithfulness because of his mercy. Some people are looking up at God and and, and and all they can hear from God is look at what you did again. Look at you. You're no good son of a soul. You just ain't no good. But God is not like that. God gives us mercy over and over and over again. He is a merciful God. And for that, we should give him our faith. He is worthy of our faithfulness. Yeah. But then we need to go on a little bit further. And we find out in those last verses, in that last half, we find that God is worthy of our praise. We got a storm that's bearing down even now. 
And we know that he is going to take care of those that love him. We know that there are some others that he's going to get rid of. Well, he does it the way that he does it. I don't ask him anymore to to show me what his will is and what his way is. I just know that every way and will that he has, I know that it's good. That's what these last psalms tell me. But here it lets me know that God is worthy of our praise. It tells us that his people should praise him because of his caring hand. His hands are caring hands. If you walk in to somebody and you see them down on the ground, there are some people that go in and put their foot on their neck. But that's not how our God is. He reaches out with his caring hands, and he begins to soothe us. He begins to pick us up. You know, the Lord upholds all those who, who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down, the eyes of all who look to you and give them their food at the proper time. That's the way our our God is. Not only does he have caring hands, we also should praise him because his people to realize that he has loving hands. Yes, he he has power, he has kindness and mercy, but in these caring hands, we also find that they are loving hands. He tells us in his word, he says, you open your hands and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. Everything that he does is all right with me. And whether it's all right with me or not, I may not understand what he's doing right now, but everything that he does, he has purpose, he has kindness, he has love, and even when it hurts me, when it don't feel good, he'll reach out with his loving hand. But then, lastly, I'll need to tell us this evening that his people should praise him because of his saving hand. The Bible lets us know that the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears the cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. Romans 8 and 28 says that all things work together for good for those that love God, the call according to his purpose. So even as the thunder rolls, even as the storm comes on shore, we need to just praise God. It's time to praise him because we are in his hand. He has the power to stop the storm. But as the storm rages, he has the purpose for the storm. He has in his hand kindness for us as we go through the storm. And we ought to look at it and just praise him. Because I know that in everything, he cares for me. I know that in everything, he loves me. And I know that he's saving me from moment to moment. Some people say, once saved, always saved. I've got to let you know that he's saving me moment by moment. I don't need just one salvation. Oh, i got salvation. I'll always have that. But he's saving me even now in the midst of this storm that's coming. He's saving me. And the most thing that was the worst and most awful thing that he saved me from is when he saved me from me. So I know he's got salvation 
and continuous saving in his hand. That one that he loved, John said in the third chapter, he said, the father loves the son and has placed everything in his hand. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. We got eternal life right now. I don't have to wait for it. It's here right now. I'm I'm never going to die. My soul will live on. My soul cries out. This old body might have to go away. There might even be a star that will bring up and pick up a tree and drop it on this body. But my soul. It's saved. Yes. My soul lives for eternity. And I just thank God. I thank Him. I praise Him. I'm a praising even through this storm. And I'm hoping that He'll help me, allow me to help somebody to make it through the storm. Let me use some of the power that has strengthened me that I might know that it's him and don't take it upon myself and brag about what I've done. But I thank you, Lord. I thank you for keeping me in your hands. Amen. Amen. I got a I got a friend of mine whom I've heard a bit of in the past. She is involved with spoken word ministry. And uh, I'm going to get her to come and and say a little bit for us this evening. I'm also asking her uh, as she comes, however, the Spirit has blessed her this evening uh, to have an accessory prayer over those that are in the path of this storm. Come on, Sister Amen. 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 Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. God is so good. I thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for... Pastor McCoy, allow me to just share a word of encouragement to you all. Just kind of give you a little testimony about about me, not so much me, but what God uh, has chosen me to do in this season is to be an encourager to to those that are lost, to those that are in the faith, to those that have been in the faith and gone through some things, church hurt members, you know, hurting pastors, whatever the case may be, God has just centered me to to do that, to to bring life and speak life back into people's lives. And um, I thank God for the time that I met Pastor McCoy and how we just kind of had that kindred spirit right off the bat. The scripture that the Lord just wanted me to share with you all on today is coming from Psalms 91, dealing with the storm and how uh, we have to learn to take refuge in God when we are going through any type of storm, whether it be with the weather, like the brother said before, or whether it be with life, because we know that we do endure a lot of things in our life that could be considered a storm. However, at the end of the day, a storm never lasts forever. It always passes, and we have to understand that we can take refuge in him. Psalms 91 reads, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. And the word also says, not coming from that scripture, but I believe it's in Habakkuk uh, 2, the just shall live by faith. So we are facing a storm. However, in the midst of this storm, it's not going to be all calamity. I really and truly believe that 
God has to allow storms to happen in our lives to get us to our purpose, get us to our destiny. If everything was always good and we never faced anything, what kind of God would we serve? He wouldn't have anything to prove. So we have to go through storms. Storms are necessary. Storms break up follow ground. Storms water the, 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 and till the ground for harvest time. So storms are not always bad. It can be bad if you are not in position to receive the harvest. So we just want to pray and cover those that are in this situation and facing the storm. Even though it's a storm, it's not to destroy us. It's to bring people closer to God. It's to bring people to the point of praying more. Sometimes we get so uh, busy with life, distractions, that we are not focused on praying every day, fasting like we should, speaking life to those that are passing us on a daily basis. We don't use our tool of witnessing like we should. And sometimes the Lord has to allow things to kind of shake us up a little bit, to get us to a place where we realize that we need God. Though we have our education, though we have our gifts, though we have our talents, we must humble ourselves and pray. And this is the season for praying. God wants to use his people like never before. These people are afraid. These people don't know who to turn to. This is a perfect opportunity for the body of Christ to be in position to usher them, to introduce them, to to be representatives, to be ambassadors for Christ. So I just want to thank you all for allowing God to use whoever's over the overseer over this prayer line and the ministry that God will continue to propel you and move you and push you in the direction of not stopping with the prayer. Because a lot of times people, they'll come to a function when it's a big name person. But when it's time for prayer, a lot of people don't want to pray because it's, it's not easy. It's not, prayer is not easy because you're coming up against a lot of resistance from the enemy. And a lot of people may not be in a place where they feel like they are strong enough to combat with whatever they may be facing when they begin to pray. So today, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. I'm not going to do spoken word today because God, I have to be obedient to God. He said pray, and that's what I'm going to do. So be praying for me as well because I am going to be one of the uh, first responders, and I'll be going to Washington, D.C. in, I believe, three weeks, September the 17th through the 29th. I'll be traveling to D.C., and for orientation to be a part, to work with FEMA for, the, for those that will be displaced, those that will be facing disaster. So I'm asking for you all to keep me covered as I be obedient and do what God has for me to do. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for your omnipotent power, your 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 this all-knowing, all-being, all-resourceful, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. God, we thank you for the manservant that have come and brought this thing together for prayer, for the word to go forth, God. I ask that you will strengthen him. I ask that you will continue to push and propel them to the next level of sharing the word and treating those that are lost and bringing them to you, God. Lord, I ask that you will strengthen those that are in the uh, facing the storm, God, facing tragedy, God, facing loss, facing disaster. But, God, you said in your word that you will be our buckler. You said in your word that you will be our strength. You said, said that you will be our pavilion. You said that you will be there in the midst of the storm. You said that you will build up a shield against the enemy. God, I ask that you would do so even now, God. I ask that you will begin to move in the supernatural, God. I ask that you will begin to move on the sea. Speak to the waves. Speak. Speak to the wind, God, even now, by your power, by your spirit, God. Move, God. God, we decree and declare protection. We decree and declare people's lives saved, God. Families reunited, even though they have had to step 
separate for a moment, God. Let these people see their families again. God, I ask that you would put your hand up and speak peace, God. I speak peace, God. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I stand in proxy. We stand in proxy for those that are facing the storm, God. But in the storm, there is purpose. But in the storm, there is strength. In the storm, there is a witness that you are the only God that can speak to the storm, God. So we ask that you will breathe on those right now, those that are nervous, those that are afraid, those that are worried about what they will lose, God. Whatever they lose, God, I ask that you will give them double for their trouble, God. Whatever they lose, God, I ask that you will replace it with something better, God. I ask that you will save the lives of the children, save the lives of the family, God, that they will continue to live and serve you, God. Help us to humble ourselves and pray. Help us to repent of our sins, God, that the storm will not overtake us, God, because we know that we are in a place where we need you, God. We need your power. We need your strength, God. We need you to speak a word. All you have to do is speak a word, and Harvey can turn around and go the other way. All you have to do is speak a word, God, and the storm will cease. All you have to do is speak a word, God, and the storm will pass away, God. And we stand on your word today. We decree and declare that every soul that you intend to live will live, and those that will die, that they will die in you, God, so they will yet live again. In the name of Jesus, those that are not saved, God, that are facing the storm, I ask that you will prepare their hearts to repent to you, to make sure they are right and in good standing with you, God. In the name of Jesus, even us that may not be facing the storm of Harvey, God, but we may be facing the storm of financial issues, God. We may be facing the storm of sickness in our body. We may be facing the storm of, of on the break of giving up and throwing in the towel, God. But you said in your word, "Be not weary and well doing." Shall we? We shall reap in fa- uh, We shall reap in due season if we faint not, God. So give us a faint not spirit in this season. Give us a faint not spirit that we will not throw in the towel. Give us a faint not spirit that we will stand on your word in the midst of adversity, in the midst of life raging storms, God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every man servant that's on this line, they will be encouraged. Every man servant and woman servant that's on this line, they will operate with the spirit of tenacity. They will not give up, God. They will not throw in the towel. They will pray without ceasing. They will get on their knees in the midnight hour and begin to walk the floor and decree and declare that all is well. All is well in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, God, in this season, souls will be saved. I decree and declare, God, because of the storm, people will begin to go to church. Because Hey, in the name of Jesus, because of the storm, people will realize that they need God in their lives because of the storm, God, by your power and by your spirit and by your might, God, lives will be changed. People will be saved. People will be delivered. People will be set free in their mind. I come against the spirit of fear and I come Mm -hmm. against the spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare in Jesus' name that it is so, that we cover the people and we cover the men, men, men and women serving, that they will be in position to serve as you have orchestrated from the beginning of time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Glory. Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Hey, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Pastor, Pastor Herbert McCoy for the word, and and we want to thank Sister Vivian for the uh, word and the prayer. Before we close this recording, there might be someone on this line now or somebody that's going to listen to this recording later that don't know the Lord as your Savior, you're not 
confessed him as Lord and Savior. You not asked him for forgiveness of your sins. You have not repented mm-hmm. of your sins. We we mm-hmm. want to pray the prayer of salvation with you right now. That that the hand of God might yes, save you. You mm-hmm. might be able to 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 find refuge under the shadow mm-hmm. of His wings. Mm-hmm. So let us mm-hmm. let us pray the prayer of salvation. Oh, um, thank you, God. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe yes, in my yes. heart mm-hmm. that Jesus died for my sin and mm-hmm. was buried and that you raised him from the dead. Mm-hmm. I repent of my sins, God. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my yes. heart. Yes. I invite you, Jesus, to become yes. the Lord of my life, to yes. rule and to reign in my heart from yes. this day forward. Please, yes. Lord, send yes. your heart. Thank you, Father. To help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you prayed that Amen. prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. And and yes. God will keep you and watch over you, even in the midst of a oh, storm. Yes, God. Yes. yes. And give him all the praise and all the glory. Yes, yes, yes Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.